Today we're working on a quick and simple project, which I call a shower poof, but you know, a loofah, a sponge, whatever. You're gonna be good with a cotton yarn. Now this is a lightweight size three DK cotton and a 3.75 millimeter hook. If you don't have this hook size, a four millimeter hook will work just fine. You're gonna begin with a slip knot. So for those of you that are new to crochet, just wrap the yarn around two fingers just like this. You're gonna insert your hook into the top loop and grab the back one. And then you're just gonna tighten by pulling on the individual threads of yarn. We're gonna chain 31. For those of you that don't know how to chain, you're gonna wrap the yarn around your hook and pull through the loop that was already on your hook. So yarn over and pull through. Once you've chained 31 stitches, your chain length should measure between 4.5 to 5 inches, which is about 11 to 13 centimeters. You're going to skip the first stitch and you're going to insert your hook into the second stitch. You're going to yarn over and pull up a loop. Once you have two loops on your hook, you're going to yarn over and pull through to single crochet. Next, you're going to chain one stitch and then you're going to skip the next stitch on your chain. So skip this one and you're going to single crochet into the next stitch. So again, you insert your hook into the stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop. Once you have two loops on your hook, you yarn over and pull through both loops and then repeat. Chain one, skip one, and single crochet in the stitch after. You're going to repeat this throughout the length of your chain. When you reach the end of the row, you should end up with just the chain one, skip one, and just the right amount of stitches to single crochet into the final stitch of the row. So here is our first row. All right, for row number two, we're gonna begin with a chain. You're gonna turn your work around, and beginning on the very first stitch of the row, you're going to single crochet. Now this stitch is mostly made up of the chain one, skip one, single crochet, we have to set up our foundation for the stitch. So in this row, we're gonna begin with that single crochet and then chain one. You're going to single crochet into the chain one stitches of the previous row. So this is the single crochet, this is the chain space. So you're gonna insert your hook into the chain space right here and single crochet. And then you're gonna repeat chain one. You're going to skip the single crochet and then single crochet into the chain space. So chain, skip the single crochet, and single crochet in the chain space. Repeat until you reach close to the end of the row, because we're going to end the row just a little differently to, to begin our foundation. All right, so once you reach the end, you're going to have, your stitch is going to look like this. So it's your chain space, and then you have one final stitch here at the end. So I just did my chain one, I'm going to single crochet in that chain space. And then your last stitch is gonna be in this final stitch of the row. So it's gonna be right down here. So just single crochet. There's no chain between these two single crochets. So you single crochet in the chain space and then single crochet into the final stitch of the row. This has set up our foundation so that we can create a one row repeat for the rest of our fabric. So you're always going to begin your row with a chain one. And then you're gonna turn your work around. We're gonna single crochet in this first stitch, uh, chain and skip the next stitch, and then single crochet into the chain space right after. So it's this stitch right here. And make sure you crochet into the chain space that's right below it, not into the stitch itself. All right, so we single crochet in the first stitch, chain one, skip the second stitch, and single crochet in the chain space. So again, not in the stitch up here, it's gonna be down in the chain space below. And then we just repeat the pattern. So chain one, skip one, single crochet in the chain space. Then again, chain one, skip one, single crochet in the chain space until you get to the end of the row. When you get to the last few stitches, you're going to end the row just like we did the previous row. So you're going to do your, what is it, single crochet, chain one, and then you're going to have the last two stitches left. So you're going to single crochet in the second to last stitch and then single crochet directly into the next stitch without a chain in between. This will set up your fabric so that you use a one row repeat instead of having to alternate at the ends or at the beginning of the row. 
Now, I learned this stitch as the woven stitch, but if you know it as something else, let us know in the comments. You're going to continue to repeat this one row until your fabric measures a length of approximately 26 inches. Once you get to the end of those 26 inches, you're again, you're going to do your two single crochets here at the end, and then you're going to chain one. Now you're going to need a long tail end of yarn. So as you can see here, I've got a ton of yarn, so I'll try to put it here so you can see it. You're going to need this to sew the poof together. Before you get to the sewing, so after you've chained and you pull your yarn through with your hook and everything, you're going to go back and you're going to weave in the short tail end of yarn. And this is the tail end from the beginning of the row. So the way I weave in tail ends is I just kind of work on the I guess, surface of the stitch so you don't go all the way through like I showed you just a second ago. You stay on the surface, so like in the front part. And you're just going to stitch through and just kind of go in like a square or a circle shape just to hide this tail end and that way your work won't become unraveled and it looks a little bit cleaner. So and the reason I twist the needle, because I did get asked that in a previous video, is to be able to pull it through. So sometimes it gets a little bit stuck um, and it's easier to pull through if you just twist on the needle and that way you don't force it. But there you go. Once you've gone around one or two times, you cut your tail end of yarn and you're ready to move on. Beginning on the side that, you know, where we began, where we are just woven your tail end, you're gonna fold your fabric over. So you have about, maybe about an inch or about three centimeters worth of, of length in the width. And you're just going to accordion fold it all the way to the end. So it doesn't have to be perfect. And it's gonna look kind of like this. So once you've gone through and done this, we're gonna take that long tail end of yarn and we're gonna use it to stitch these, I guess the folds together. This is what's gonna create the nice little poof effect for our fabric. So the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna stitch in towards the center of your fabric. So just kinda of give it a few quick stitches like this until you get to the center of the fabric. And then I pull on this so that it's not all scrunched up, but you know, you can leave it scrunched up if you want to. All right, so we're gonna do just a stitch and we're gonna keep those stitches here in the center of our accordion folds. So just a stitch all the way through all of the folds of the fabric until you get to the other side. And I'm gonna speed this up because there's a lot of sewing here. So once you've gone through, look, keep your stitch close together, just in the center, and then just go around. I went around, gosh, maybe like 10 times. Remember that this is cotton and it does get wet and it does get heavy, so you really wanna put a lot of stitches in this, otherwise it's going to fall apart after a few uses. So make sure you stitch it, it's nice and tight. Go around, like I said, about maybe 10 times. And then tighten up your thread, just like you saw a minute ago, before you start twisting it. So as you twist, just go through and shape it the way you want it to look. There is going to be more stitching involved, so once you've gone through and shaped it, you're again going to go through and stitch it up. So give it about another 10 stitches, just go all the way through the poof. Make sure to stitch at the folds, so wherever it was that you twisted, and that's where you want the placement of the poof to be, stitch there, that way it'll hold its shape. Now go through maybe about another 10 times or so. Um, I'm going to cut the clip here in a bit so you're not going to see me stitch it over and over and over, but I went through, gosh, it was probably a total of like 20 to 30 <laughs> stitches combined with that first accordion fold stitch and then this one, but that way your poof will hold its shape. Once you've finished all of that stitching, you're going to fold your corners like this. Now this is, this is the end, so the top end and the bottom end of the fabric, and then you're just going to give it a quick stitch across. And then I'll speed through it so you can still see what I'm doing, but, you know, not sit here watching me sew for <laughs> I don't even know how many minutes. So go all the way to the top of the fabric, and then once you reach the top, you're going to stitch right back down just to reinforce those stitches and to get your needle back towards the center of the poof. Because you still have the other end of the, of the fabric to stitch together, so... Go through all the way to the other end of the poof. And then here are those two other ends. So again, you just overlap them like this and stitch across. And this one also, you're going to go all the way to the top ends. 
and then stitch all the way back down. So don't cut your yarn once you're through with this. We're going to make the little chain. That way you can actually have something to hang your poof with in the shower. So while I'm stitching, I'll give you a quick note on how to care for these. Now the yarn I'm using is 100% cotton. And when I wash these, so you know, you're using them in the shower or whatnot, you can throw them into the washing machine. You are going to need to put them in the dryer. Because you have all of those folds from the accordion fold and then just to shape everything, it will need to go in the dryer at high heat. Now it's not going to shrink by very much, it just become a tiny bit smaller, but that way you make sure you don't grow any mold or any kind of bacteria in all of the fold of the poof. Alright, so once you've gone through, you've made a small knot when you finish sewing, which I didn't mention because I was talking to you about other stuff, but you know, make a small knot. And with the remaining yarn, you're going to insert your hook through, you know, whatever stitches you want of the poof, and then pull up a loop. And as you can see, I'm having difficulty. All right, once you go through, you're just going to make a chain. There's no specific like stitch count for this. It's however much yarn you have left. And however long you want the little chain, um, I'm not sure what to call it, <laughs> I guess the chain, so that you can have a little hangy tie. So however long you want that to be, you know, chain that many number of stitches. So I'll make a few more stitches here and just kind of show you how to measure it. Maybe I should have counted, that would have made it a little bit easier. Anyway, once you've got a length of chain like this, just fold it over and see if it's the length you want. And if it's long enough for what you need, then stop there, and if not, add a few more stitches. See, I still have some leftover yarn. So you are gonna need uh, a few inches of yarn, since you are gonna need to stitch this, and it will need to be reinforced, because again, this is gonna be heavy when it's wet, so you don't want it to break apart. So just go through, and give it a few good stitches. Make sure that you reinforce the chain as well. So stitch at the base of the chain, not just along the bottom part of the poof, like actually include the chain while you're stitching. And that way, you know, it'll be nice and secure and not fall in the shower. All right, but that's it. So when once you're done with all of that, just go through weaving your tail ends like I showed you earlier in the video, and now you're done. So <laughs> you can go through and make these in a bunch of different colors and sell them at a craft show or you know, give them away to friends and family, whoever you want. But there you go. You can find the written pattern for this project and many others in my shop, along with yarn and other crochet materials. So I'll leave the link down in the description box below. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you again in the next video.